Well, this video is a little bit of a different video, but it's related to quality, which I've made quite a few videos about. And if you probably go and look back at some of my other videos, I speak a lot on quality because in my previous life, I worked a lot to do with standards and also accuracy and quality. So I even held signatory to the, the National Accredited Testing Association here in Australia. So I know a little bit about maintaining quality and how that works. Now with this, with this video that Hambini's put out, he goes over this bike called the Bertoletti. Bertoletti, I think that's how you say it. I'm not actually familiar with the brand, but it's a boutique brand out of Italy that's located in Milan. And the model that uh, was, was being reamed, as Habini likes to put it, is the legend. Now, we look at it and we can all go, oh, look, that's terrible, that's terrible quality. But what we don't look at is the personal issue that this does and impacts on the bicycle industry. And that's something I want to talk about because when we see stuff like this, it takes away that, that artistic, that emotional buy-in that people have when it comes to bikes and artisans and quality. So let's roll the intro and let's have a little bit of a talk about how this can impact on individuals and the industry in a holistic way. Now, we all have our favorite brand of bicycles and we may like them for a number of reasons. We might like them because that team's winning the Tour de France, which is happening at the moment, which has had some very, very good competition. And if someone wins the Tour de France, people might buy that brand or they might think that that's a really good brand because the pros are using it and they perform very well on it. Or they might just had that bike before and they're sticking with that brand and they've had a good experience with that brand or their local bike shop promotes that brand and they like the owner of that shop so they buy the product that that guy is selling. So we do get this emotional attachment to the brand of bicycles or to our bicycles just like people do with cars. You know, they might be a Ford guy or they might be a GM guy or they might be a Toyota, Toyota guy and people... It's not just like, oh, they're a good car and I drive it, which a lot of people do think like that, but a lot of people are very much bought into the product and the name and will only buy that brand because they believe that that manufacturer, that product is better than other ones because they have an emotional buy-in. Well, in this case, there's obviously it was a guy and this guy must have done some research on some top end bikes because he obviously was a Hambini fan and you've probably seen some of these brands are putting out very poor quality. So he thought, OK, well, look, I'm going to buy myself a handmade bike out of Italy. It's not coming from China. It's made in Europe and it's made by a boutique artisan in Milan, Italy. And he probably found this company which is Bertoletti. And he decided on this model legend. And what he did is he goes, okay, well, look, I'm going to, I'm going to fly over and pick up this frame once it's finished. So I'm going to fly from America to Italy, pick up the frame. I'm going to take it to Hambini because he's a Hambini fan and he wants the Hambini bottom bracket put into the bike. So he has a really uniform system that meets really good standards because obviously Hambini, as we know, if we watch Hambini, everyone might not like his style, but when it comes to the technical side of things, he's very particular on how he manufactures and also criticizes products meeting specifications that are industry standards. So when this guy arrived at Hambini's and gave him the bike, Unfortunately, Hambini had some not so good news for this purchaser and this bike cost him $7,000 US. So obviously his, his, his emotional buy-in to having an artisan brand from Italy handmade in Milan obviously was deflated and it probably has damaged his belief in the cycling industry. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in conclusion, people might say these are one-offs and Hambini obviously attracts the bikes that have some problems because obviously they wouldn't go to him if they didn't have a problem. But in this case, it wasn't. It, that wasn't the case. The guy didn't have a problem. The bike hadn't been built up. What had happened was he just wanted to have the Hambini bottom bracket. So as far as he was aware, he was just going to buy this frame, take it to a Hambini, have the bottom bracket made and fitted, and then he would fly home and have his bike built up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. And we're seeing that with quite a lot of these top-end brands. We're seeing that the quality is not as good as we expect. It's like it's like buying a Ferrari and they claim it can do 300 kilometers an hour. And then when you take it to the track and you're going down the straight and you've got it flat to the boards and it peaks out at 250 and you go, what's going on? I bought this Ferrari. I've paid a million bucks for it. And it doesn't do what it claims. Well, it's kind of the same thing. And we know with a bicycle that a lot of companies are selling products and chains and lubricants and all this about efficiency of drivetrain. Ceramic speed are one of them. Absolute black are another. Silka are another as they go on and on and on. But yet, a lot of these brands, the bottom brackets are so bad, we could be losing 15, 20 watts just because the alignment is so bad. And not only losing watts, we're having to replace the bearings at a very short time frame, months or even weeks in some cases, Hambini has shown. So this is really poor when you're actually buying a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Porsche or a very expensive bike that's supposed to be made as a race bike and it's supposed to be like next level above your normal everyday bikes. And that means that these tolerances and qualities is going to be higher. So we have left losses and the bike handles probably because it's not, it's not out of square. The, the machining is within very fine tolerances, so there's no movement in the headset. The, the bottom bracket works as efficiently as possible because it's a racing bike and we're trying to save as many watts as possible. Now, people may argue, yeah, people are buying these bikes at dentists and doctors and they're probably 20, 30, 40 kilos overweight, and that may be true. But if you buy a Ferrari and it says it's going to go 300 kilometers an hour and you're paying a million dollars, it doesn't matter if, you're a, if, if you can't drive it and you're not a very good driver. That's what you're buying. That's what you expect. That's what the sales pitch for that product is telling you. It's, I don't really buy into this thing like, hey, you can't use that thing to its, to its ability. Now, let's face it. If most of us went out and bought a Ferrari, we're probably not going to drive it to its ability. But that doesn't mean that Ferrari then should downgrade the product because they're going, hey, look, no one's going to be able to drive this car properly anyway, so what does it matter? What you're paying for is a product that can do that and can be driven at that level, so that's how it should be made because that is what a normal, reasonable person would expect. That's what they're paying for. They're paying for a sports car. It's the same with a bicycle. We're paying for a high-performance road bicycle. Whether you can ride it at that level is immaterial, that is what you're paying $7,000 just for a frame for. You're expecting this bike to be at a higher level than, say, a three or $4,000 bike or a $2,000 bike. You're expecting it to be made to a higher standard. Now, when we took it standard, that is quality. So this is where the whole bike industry is going wrong. And it's a bit of a bad taste in people's mouths because... You don't really know by looking at a bike, especially once it's built, if these things are really within tolerances. You have to take it apart and you have to measure it and check those things. It's hard to evaluate it as a purchaser buying this piece of equipment. Well, anyway, guys, leave your comments down below because I think this is really a, a sad state of affairs because not only with this guy has had to put his hand in his pocket, and he's probably lost a lot of money. Even if he has the money and he's a wealthy guy, he didn't get what he paid for. He didn't get what he expected. He didn't, his, his buy into that brand and the faith that he had in a handmade Italian bike has really been shattered. And people who are probably hearing this story are probably going, hey, look, that's just, that's just incredible. 
And I must admit, I do feel very sorry for the guy. I think that um, apart from taking the money out of it, the what else would you, you would you have done? I mean, he's obviously tried to get the best frame he, he can. It probably for him could have even been a collector's piece, something that was his special bike. And all that now has been shattered. Okay, guys. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it. And I will see you next vid. Cheers.